Hello everybody and welcome to the first video of 2020. I'm glad you can be joining me. Um, the end of 2019 was a bit of a mishmash because I got sick for like two and a half weeks. But I'm finally better, I'm finally well, so we are going to continue on with the project. Um, today we are in the office working on the transfer case design that I talked about previously and we won't be working on the actual rebuilding of the manual transmission for a couple more weeks because I haven't had a chance to order the parts I need for that. Today we're going to focus on catching you all up with what's going on with the transfer case design. So as a quick recap, I've grabbed a couple pictures off of the internet and we're going to talk about what my plan is and what I've done so far. So the picture I have up right now is the manual transmission for my vehicle. From this surface to about this joint right here, all of this is the manual transmission. And this is what I plan on using in the truck. From this joint back to this output flange this is the manual transfer case and this is what i want to swap over to an automated automated transfer case um something that i said that i can control with a knob that as far as i can tell hasn't been done and there is no easy way to do it trying to fit this in the same work area that the manual transmission and automatic transmissions are in. To give a quick overview of what exactly all of this on this picture does, the engine is mounted to this front flange up here and the power is given into an input shaft. That power goes through the transmission and then goes through the transfer case. And the transfer case has three positions. It has a two-wheel drive rear output, it has a four-wheel drive low output, and a four-wheel drive high output. And that's all done in this rear section that I highlighted before. This flange right here is the prop shaft that goes to the front wheels and this flange on the back is the prop shaft that goes back to the back wheels. So moving on to the automatic transmission from this flange to here is the automatic transmission. And then from this line all the way back to the rear prop shaft flange is the transfer case. And inside of here are a bunch of clutch packs and gears that I want to make my own housing to be able to attach on the back of the manual transmission. We are looking at the drop down section of the transfer case. This flange is one of the flanges that I have to meet up with. All this has in it is the chain drive that separates the front wheel prop shaft from the rear wheel prop shaft. This gear right here is the inside of a clutch pack and when you engage that clutch pack it's attached to the chain drive on the other side of this wall that drives the front wheels and then the output shaft goes through in this section and it comes out we can close this this hole and this is where the rear prop shaft is. To kind of sum up what all this is about, I want to attach the transfer case you see here and attach it to the manual transmission you see here. <laughs> and I think it can be done and I'm going to explain why. So we can close Chrome and I have Inventor already uploaded and we're going to go through the steps that I've already done for working on this project. So right here we have basically the two flanges that I need to work with. Um, this outline is the profile of this part that I need to mate with. And then this profile is the outline of the back of this flange. And these are the two parts that I need to combine. And inside this volume, I need to fit all of the parts for the automatic transfer case. 
so back to inventor this surface right here is where the manual transmission is and this surface right here is the drop down for the automatic transfer case chain drive so keeping this in mind i spent the last month drawing up all of the parts of the automatic transfer case the input shaft is on this side and the output shaft is on this side um, this is the shaft that i talked about going through the chain drive that attaches to the rear wheels so we're going to switch to the exploded view and we're going to walk through all of these parts and explain what each part does and then kind of show you how everything fits together so the first thing I'm gonna explain is how we go from two wheel drive to four wheel drive. And this explains why we can't have a full time all wheel drive Toyota pickup with this type of transfer case. So the power comes in through all this stuff and then basically comes out this output shaft. And on this output shaft, one of these sections is splined. And this little section that's splined is splined to this part right here. And this is a clutch pack. And what a clutch pack is, is basically a series of clutches, um, which are basically two discs that rub together. And when you don't have them touching, they can spin freely. But when you press the clutches together, they grip and they both move together. If you give me a second and let me open up the clutch pack, I can do a second view and show you what exactly is going on. This part is splined, which I haven't added the splines in because it wasn't necessarily needed. Um, and this is what is splined to the output shaft that goes to the back wheels. This part you can see in blue, which I'll open it up. This always spins with the output shaft going to the rear wheels. And inside this assembly, there is a piston, which is this part right here. When we pressurize this volume right here, this piston moves this direction. And when that happens, it pushes all of these plates together. And half of them are splined to the part that's always spinning. And half of them are splined to the gear that I showed in the other part, which I should still have up. This part. So half of them are attached to a ring that goes around this, which is always attached to the rear output shaft. And the other part is splined to the sprocket of the chain drive that goes down to the front wheel drive. So, like I said, you pressurize this cavity, this piston moves, it locks all of the external and internal clutch plates together so that the rear wheel output shaft spins with the front wheel chain drive. And the way that this gets power is by a hydraulic passage that is in this part, which is called the manifold. This is how you get the pressure from outside of the system into the system. So you pressurize that port, it locks the rear clutch pack together, which locks the front wheel drive and the rear wheel drive together. And because they're locked and can't slip, that's why we can't have a full time all wheel drive on the truck. So moving on from here, is the rest of the stuff. And the rest of the stuff controls whether or not you're going to be in four wheel low or four wheel high. Out of the gate, whenever you start the truck and your transmission is pressurized and everything, you are in high gear, which means that as the input shaft spins once into the transfer case, the output shaft spins once going out. And that is done by using a planetary and locking the planetary in a particular configuration. So moving to the front of the transmission parts, the first part to understand is where the power comes in. When you combine the two, there's a shaft that comes out of the transmission and it goes into the transfer case. And that is splined to this part right here through these internal splines. And these internal splines are connected to the sun gear of the planetary. And this particular one also has a clutch pack that's attached to the sun gear so that you can lock certain things together. As the power from the transmission comes into the transfer case, it starts spinning this gear. 
and this gear is spinning the inside half of this particular clutch pack. And during normal drive, this clutch pack is engaged at 150 to 200 PSI, so it is locked together. This internal spline and then the external spline on this part are spinning as one. With everything combined, this last couple centimeters of spline you see right here meet with this part, which is part of the output shaft. And this particular part, um, if you exclude the shaft, normally this part is considered the carrier. This particular settings, they just have the output shaft attached directly to the carrier so that you can use two ratios of the planetary system. So in normal operations, like I said, the power comes in to the transfer case, drives this sun gear, which is locked to this clutch, which is locked to the carrier. And since all of those are locked together, that means everything spins one to one. And the way that this is energized is by a hydraulic passage that is on this particular part. And this is another manifold. So when all of this is engaged, this is where you get your high ratio. So when you go from two wheel high to four wheel high, the only thing that happens is it engages this back clutch. So in two wheel high, the only clutch that is engaged is this front one. When you're in four wheel high, there's two clutches engaged. There's the front one and then there's the rear one. And then the last bit is how you get to four wheel low. And this is where a lot of the crazy magic happens. When you're switching a planetary from one gear to another gear, you can't lock everything together in one because you will explode something. So there's a third clutch pack, which you see right here. And this clutch pack locks the ring gear, which is the third part of the planetary, to the housing of the transfer case. This clutch pack is disengaged. So that means that the ring gear can spin freely. When you switch to low, the first thing that has to happen is the existing engaged clutch has to disengage. So that means this front clutch that's doing the one-to-one -one ratio unlocks so that the entire system can move freely. And once that's unlocked, the second clutch locks the ring gear to the housing. So that means that the ring gear is now fixed. And since the ring gear is fixed and the sun gear and the carrier are no longer locked into one, that means the gear ratio between the sun gear and the carrier can start moving anywhere between three to one to four to one. As the input power comes from the transmission and starts spinning the input sun gear and we have the ring gear locked, the output shaft now spins anywhere between a third to a fourth of the speed, which means you're going slower than you would be if you were in high gear. With that said, when we go back and we've now switched into four wheel low, the clutches that are engaged are the middle clutch and the back clutch. The middle clutch is the low, the back clutch is the four wheel drive. Because I'm playing with the way the system works, we can disengage the front wheels and engage the middle clutch pack and disengage the front clutch pack and have two wheel low, which might be fun to have. It'll be an option. I might add it. So with all of that explained, um, a little verbosely, we can go back into how all of this fits into what I'm trying to achieve. So bringing everything back together. This is what the entire assembly looks like. And when you take all of this and the two flanges that I've measured and put together in one part, we come up with this assembly. <laughs> Before I took the transmissions apart, I measured the flange distance from the bell housing. And then I took the measurements of each little section of the manual transmission, which I can show you here. So I took measurements from the bell housing to the bell housing transmission split, and then the front part of the transmission, the middle section, and then the rear part of the manual transmission. 
and I added all those into here. So we have the bell housing face, and then we have the back of the bell housing, then we have the back of the front section, and then we have the back of the center section, and then we have the back of the rear section, <laughs> um, and then off of the automatic transmission, I measured the flange locations. This location to this location was 27 and three quarters or something like that. It's in here. Um, so I need to get that prop shaft in the same location or as close as possible so that the length of the prop shafts don't change. The other part is the front drive flange. If we're looking at the side of the truck and like the bell housings here and we're coming bell housing, transmission, back of transmission, front of transfer case, and then back of transfer case, and then output shaft of the front, there's this plane, which is you can see the red RTV on, is slightly in front of it. And that gives me the back surface of the housing I need to make. So through all of that, I figured that the housing needs to be about 145 millimeters in length. So if we zoom in, we can see those two parts here. This, let's do a section view. This surface right here is the back of the manual transmission. And this surface right here is the front of the gear drive section of the transfer case. So inside this section, I have to fit all of the parts that I've previously showed you. And this is where we get a little bit tricky. The reason I had the model part of the manual transmission is because I realized to keep that prop shaft in the same location, I needed the transfer case parts to go into the volume of the transmission. And luckily there is a nice large pocket that is sunk in that everything fits into. One of the things I also did was measured how far this clutch pack goes into the chain section of the transfer case. Basically in this picture, how far the internal components sink into this part. So by putting everything together, I got very close. As you can see, these things are really close together. And this is after I've adjusted everything back a half of an inch. I think just by moving everything back half an inch, everything will work fine. And I could do things like move the front differential back half an inch. I could move the entire engine and transmission up a half an inch to get those things back in the same location. With all of this said, it looks like I'll be able to fit all the internal parts of the automatic transfer case behind the manual transmission. And that leads to a whole mess of things I need to create. But because I've been talking so long, we're gonna leave that for the next video. The thing I wanna close with is because everything fits and everything makes sense and everything looks right, the next step is to start filling in the space between this surface and this surface. And that's the housing that I'm gonna have to cast and machine. But we're gonna end this video here. If you have any comments or questions or just anything you wanna know about this project, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, I would love it if you give me a like. If you are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, I would love it if you subscribed. I really do appreciate every single one of you that have subscribed so far, and I'm looking forward to continuing to show this off as I progress designing it. And in a couple months, hopefully, making a forge to cast it and then machining it, which would be awesome. But I'm gonna leave you all here. Thank you again for watching. I hope you all had an awesome holidays back in 2019. I hope your 2020 has started off great and has a bunch of momentum to make the entire year wonderful. But that's it for this one. I will see you in the next one. You all take care and I will see you all later. Bye guys.